Hello, and welcome to my channel. This is going to be a bit of a departure from what I usually post, as today I'm going to review the Anchor 555 Powerhouse. Now, as a disclaimer, at the very beginning, I'm going to say that I'm not a paid endorser. I did not receive this from Anchor. I purchased it myself directly, and I'm not receiving any kind of compensation for my review. So this will be entirely my own opinions. And since I don't have any of the fancy testing equipment like some of the other reviewers have, like Hobotech and Will Prouse, this will just be a practical review of what it can do. So I'll cover what it comes with. You get your manual, of course. There is a DC charger, a solar cable charger. You can hook up to two solar panels for a maximum of 200 watts input and the brick charger. It's a lithium iron phosphate battery, the newer kind, and it has a thousand watt maximum output. The weight is about 30 pounds, a little under 30 pounds. Now, as far as the sine wave and whether or not it's mentioned in the manual is the sine wave is not mentioned in the manual, nor is the peak surge, but I checked with Anchor and they told me that the sine wave of the AC inverter is pure sine wave and that the peak surge is 1500 watts. And there's also no mention of what the type of solar charge controller and I'm still waiting to hear back from Anchor on that. Now the external power brick that it comes with to charge it with gets very warm when you charge it up. As you can see it doesn't have any kind of a cooling fan like some of the other units do. So it will get very warm. So be careful when you pick it up. If you had it charged for a few hours, then yeah, be careful when you pick it up. It's going to get warm. It does do pass-through charging. And it has a manual power save feature that you can activate right here. And there's a little indicator that tells you that it's been on. So those of you that use CPAP or if you have a refrigerator that cycles on and off, you can switch this feature off and that way it'll remain on and continue to power your device. So next I'll cover each of the different types of features that it has. And the first would be the AC ports. You've got six AC outlets. You can put up to three three-prong plugs into them and it has its own switch to switch them on and off. There's also an indicator that'll tell you that it is activated. And then you have your DC. We have one DC port here with a separate switch. This is 12 volts, 10 amps. And there's also an indicator on the display for that. And the USB ports they remain on constantly. They don't have their own separate switch. You just plug in and they're available. And what you have is one USB-C 100 watt bi-directional port. So you can charge with this through that port up to 100 watts. Two USB-C 60 watt ports and two USB-A uh, IQ quick charge ports and you just plug anything in when you're ready. I'll start, I'll put the phone in. I'll plug a small lamp in. I've got a 75 watt bulb on there. Plug a battery charger in. I, I know a lot of ham radio operators like to use these as well for field day operations, emergency operations, and so on. So I'm going to plug my Kenwood F680 into the car port. And 
you can see the lights are on and it's charging and the battery charger is charging and I've got my cell phone going and I'll plug my tablet into one of the USB-C ports and that's now charging Now on the display, it's going to, if it focuses, if it's clear enough, I hope that it's clear enough to read, but we're getting a total of 94 watts, 95 watts output. And the indicator over on the right is saying I've got about 9 hours, 8.9 hours to go at that current load. Now one of the things that I noticed about this is that the voltage is fluctuating a little bit. It's not staying at exactly 110. Now that's a, that's a 75 watt bulb that I have in there and it's saying 67.6 .6 watts. And so there's there's a little bit of discrepancy but it is working. And now the, the main reason I wanted to get this particular unit was I wanted a medium-sized unit that could power my kitchen refrigerator for a day if I lose power. And as opposed to one of those big monsters like the Blue Eddy AC200s and the like, where they're these big heavy, heavy, these big heavy things that are hard to lug around. So my refrigerator, which is a Whirlpool, uses about 800 watt hours for one day. This is rated up to 1,024. So in a little while, I'm going to give a practical demo of that and plug this in to the fridge and see how long it lasts. So here I am back at the refrigerator. I've now plugged the refrigerator into the Anchor 555. And it's currently drawing 326 watts, although the watt meter says 334, so there's a little bit of a difference. And right now it's saying two and a half, 2.7 hours. Now this will cycle on and off, so I will check back periodically and see how it's going, see how long it lasts. And here it is one hour later. 86% I'm drawing 86 watts although the watt meter is only showing 40 minutes of usage I don't know why that is but it's been an hour don't know if this is going to make a full 24 hours or not but we'll see three hours in 72% left and I'm only drawing 7 watts. For you know, a little while ago, about an hour and 20 minutes in, it was down to same thing. It's only about 7 watts being drawn. So you know, as long as the compressor's not on, it's not drawing much. And it is indeed on because there's the light. So, so far, so good. Six hours and counting. I'm at 54%. Only using 7 watts right now. So it's holding up pretty well. It's now 3 o'clock in the morning. And I'm down to 8%. And it's been going for almost 14 and a half hours, so about 10 hours short of what I was hoping to get. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge this unit up, start it up again tomorrow, and this time I will supplement it with solar power. I'll see you then. Well, here we are the next day, Sunday, August 7th. The unit is recharged, and I now have it hooked to the solar panels. I'm getting about 60 watts in and 13 watts being used by the refrigerator at the moment. 
So we'll see how long this lasts. I'll check back on occasion. Two hours and 12 minutes and I'm still at 95% capacity. 48 watts coming in from the solar panels and 82 watts going out to the fridge. And much better performance than yesterday. And here we are at 5 hours and I'm at 82%. 86 watts going out. No solar coming in right now. But it's looking good so far. And I'm at 9 hours. 54% left. Only using 7 watts right now. Looks like it's going to do better than last night. And the sun is down, so no more solar. It's 3.30 in the morning. I've got 4% left. 15 hours and 39 minutes. A little bit better. I'll have a conclusion in a little while. So, in conclusion, in my experience with the Anchor 555 powerhouse is that it's a good quality build. It's the Anchor quality. I got fast responses from Anchor support for the questions that I asked. It's a good median unit if you don't want to have a, one of the large units like the Blue Eddy A200 and others that are just huge monsters. You can always build your own if you'd like. Um, there's a YouTube channel Gear and Gadget Reviews where he just built a nice one. Of course the battery alone costs $700. Uh, it's a good portability. It's about 30 pounds. Uh, so it's not, uh, it's not a lightweight by any stretch of the imagination, but you can still haul it around if you need to do, if you're going camping. And it's a good use in amateur radio. So if you're in amateur radio like I am, you, you can use it at field day, public service events, parks on the air, emergency operations, and so on. And one of the things I wanted to cover is that if you get one of these uh, binding posts, banana plug adapters, you can plug that in there and hook, hook your radios. I can hook my FT8900 to that. I can plug in my IC746 Pro and use it if we're in a power outage or out in the field. And while it didn't run my refrigerator for the full day like I hoped it would, it fell about 10 hours short. It's got an advertised watt hour rating of 1024 and my refrigerator uses 800 watt hours in a day. So I'll have to leave that to the pros to figure out that discrepancy. So the, like Professor Hobo, Will Prowse, they might be able to explain that. Now the manual could use a little beefing up. Uh, it needs to include the specs on what the inverter type is, the peak load, and the solar charge controller. So it, I covered that already, but I'll cover them again. But the peak load is 1500 watts. The solar charge controller is an MPPT. I just heard back from Blue Eddy over the weekend on that. And it is a pure sine wave inverter. And those are the kind of specs that you'll need if you're, uh, if you're a homesteader or if you're living off-grid. You're probably going to want to know those figures, if, especially if you're using power tools of any kind. Now I did connect it to solar panels. I have the Harbor Freight Thunderbolt solar panels. And the way that you can connect those to this is if you get one of these converter cables which you can get on Amazon and goes from SAE to the DC7909 mail connector. So when you get your when you get that one combiner that cord that comes in from all four of those panels and it goes down to one, you can connect that through here and you, you can then connect it into the unit with this converter. And this plug also comes with a polarity changer and, uh, and, and another adapter. And if you need more USB ports, you can always, always get one of these gadgets like I picked up at 5 Below. And that's another 
type C charger and another type A. I mean, you can get these anywhere, not just fly below. I mean, just about, Stewart's has them. I mean, you can find them at Staples, just about anywhere. Five bucks. And if anyone was interested in the kind of refrigerator that I was powering, it's a Whirlpool WRT-54. So it's a standard sized kitchen refrigerator, not one of the portable DC powered jobs. Just the kind you're going to find in just uh, your average kitchen. And I forgot to cover that there also is a light on here as well. You can switch that on and off and you'll also get the SOS. You hold it for two seconds and it get blinks SOS. So that's about all. Thank you for watching my channel and good luck.